Um, so we go on to the uh, social influencer uh, panel. I shouldn't say social influencer because they're just influencers in all warps of life. But um, I'm really excited to uh, announce we've got three influencers. We've got Liz Lumley um, here, so um, global fintech influencer and uh, um, an advisor, um, runs a personal blog, um, Girl Disruptive. Uh, we've got Spiros Magares, venture capitalist and, and senior advisor to fintech companies as well. Um, and Ian Moyes, director at Natterbox and a cloud and security influencer. <laughs> Um, so these three are, you know, a global uh, hitting influencers. They have wonderful networks, and um, and and also, um, you know, Ian said that he he recently had a tweet which was featured on mainstream TV. So they're obviously getting a lot of attention from um, from mainstream media as well as in social circles. So um, uh, please welcome uh, all three, and please come up to the stage, and we can ask some questions. Yeah, just take any three. Oh. Let's just sit in the middle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on. Uh -huh. Hi, I'm Liz Lumley. So I just want to thank you so much for coming. Um, you know, Spiros Fluim from, from Switzerland. Um, and uh, you know, Ian's from Berkshire. I don't know where you live, uh, Liz, but. Kent. Kent, so all the way from Kent as well. Um, fantastic. So thank you so much for, for being here. I think it's a real treat for us to hear from. Um, from influencers rather than to brand marketeers all the time, so you can really hear it from their side. And obviously, everyone in the influencer space is an individual, so they'll all have their own you know, personal stories here. But I wonder whether you could uh, each introduce yourself and give a bit of an overview of who you are and uh, maybe some of the work that you've done with brands. Um, if we could start with Liz, then that would be fantastic. So uh, my name is Liz Lumley, and I've, I've been in fintech for about 24 years. Um, so yeah, which is it used to be called financial information technology, but now we're we're hashtag friendly, um, so which makes it a lot easier for me. Um, most of that time, I was a journalist and an analyst. Um, more recently, I've been working with startups. I was managing director of startup bootcamp fintech, um, and I have kind of an uneasy relationship with being an influencer because it kind of you know some people seek being influencers and others have it sort of thrust upon them, um, and so I've I've kind of gone back and forth with. Um, how I use it to my own advantage, um, and and how I use it to really amplify other people, because I've kind of looked at it recently as my status as an influencer, for good or bad, I is a responsibility, um, and so I try to use that to promote uh, specifically women in fintech um, uh, very aggressively, and I think that's almost like a moral imperative for me right at the moment. Um, I'll probably go into brands that I've worked with during the panel. Okay, fantastic. Um, Spiros? Hey, my name is Spiros McGarris. Uh, I come from the hedge fund industry. I had my own startups in New York. I had my own failures with all the consequences of divorce, etc. cetera. Not a great woman, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I must admit, but I just say I know what it means uh, to have a startup that's not working. Um, I'm invested in several startups globally, Canada, everywhere in America, Europe, and... Um, Yes, basically, I, I when when I advise companies, uh, like I advise SAP, I wrote a white paper for them. I it's influences for me. It's not only visibility; it's also insights. And when you look at that, you know that way, then you get more out of a partnership with an influencer. Great, fantastic, Ian. Hi, my name is Ian Moyes. Um, my role is as a sales leader in the cloud uh, technology industry. And social, for me, I fell into Baxham because I noticed a number of years ago it was getting harder to sell and engage with customers. So I started doing social selling without understanding what it was termed, but just trying to figure out how do I leverage this to get to people I want to get to. So there's now books on it. I sit on the board of a social selling company with the best-selling author, Tim Hughes. Um, so I fell into Baxham. I'm self-taught, figured it all out. And to me, it's a little bit of a game that there isn't a Bible of how to do it. You, you, and there's lots of tricks and things that I think people overcomplicate. Um, and yeah, I get in, invited now to speak at events. Tomorrow I'm at Oracle at the O2, worse to get to from here, but um, as a social influencer for the day to do blogs and a general piece to influence. So I do influencing for a lot of different companies. I've done Miller-Hyman, Oracle, Equinix, um, lots of different companies approach me. 
Okay, brilliant. Outside and, the day job. And, and I suppose all the marketers are asking that themselves, you know, what value can we deliver to influencers? But can I turn the question on its head uh, and just you know, ask you about some of the some of the stories about you working with brands and what impact you, you feel you've had on on that brand, whether it be credibility, whether it be sales, whether it be social amplification, or just the insights and the and the responsibilities as as you were talking, Liz. So. Um, uh, Liz, would you like well, to Well, I mean, in terms of brands, I mean, what I get asked to do now is um, either, you know, go to events and speak or write blogs or do interviews, tweet, uh, or put together um, events. So, like, to take it off social, I put together a lot of sort of small roundtable events with for lead generation exercise, for example. That's sort of a, an offline uh, influencer activity I do. But, I mean, some of the – it first kind of started um, – uh, MasterCard hired me in, when I was with my old company to be embedded on their booth at Mobile World Congress um, and to just uh, report for them, um, to interview their executives, interview their clients, go to all their sessions where their executives were speaking, tweet from it. Um, and they never told me what to tweet or what to say, but they kind of knew that I know the payments industry and uh, I know what their executives were talking about. I knew what questions to ask. Um, and that was... That was, you know, so I wasn't there to cover Mobile World Congress as an event. I was there to cover MasterCard specifically, and that's why they hired me. Um, now, you know, I go to places like Fun Forum uh, with Informer to, to blog from the event for them. And again, they don't tell me what to write, uh, but I'm hired from them to, to write about the event from an objective point of view and, and amplify their message. So those are some of the things I do now. Okay, but as I said, in spirit, I know that you've got a, a few stories about, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, about your value. Uh, basically, I mean, one good example for an influence, I mean, people ask me also to write about them, but I never do. <laughs> you know, but it's not good or uh, right or wrong. It's just every influence has his own style. Mm -hmm. I give exposure by being associated with a brand and, and also telling my readers that I'm associated with, because it's awful... Uh, to, to say something nice about a company and um, they don't know that you're involved in some ways. It's easy in my case because most of the companies I'm involved in, I'm an investor. And one of the companies, a listed company, that was a good uh, showcase for influencers. <coughs> when I joined the end of September, the marketing guy called me and I said, oh, he called me, called me, I didn't pick it up. I didn't know who it was. But out of courtesy, I always pick up and I always call back eventually, and because we've all been on that side where we wanted something and we had to call someone. So I picked it up and then he told me the story. I said, oh my God, that's a great story. Let me talk to the owners. So I talked to the owners. Very quickly, we got a deal. I invested. And the share price went from 40 cents at the day of the announcement to 50 cents, Canadian company. And it went up to over $3 within a few months. What I want to say is we influencers are people who give insights. It's it's catalyst. I mean, you don't win a game. You can win a game with the team. Basically, I'm a good player what I'm doing, but with all the rest of, I mean, the company and yourself. But you're an, you're an investor in that company. Yes. But, okay, um, to make that clear. Yeah, I'm an investor in that company, yes. Okay. And But there's also a side story to this. The stock price crashed again because <laughs> the founders, when they make a lot of money, they start fighting. <laughs> But that will be resolved June 12th, and then I hope it goes up again. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just one of those stories. Uh, I think uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a great way of working with influencers when you look for their insights, because they're very much tuned to hone to what's happening. You know? and, and it's a great voice to hear. I mean, they, they're not so much involved in the day-to-day -day job of yours. But they will tell you the truth because they couldn't care less if you like it or not. They say it in a nice way. Where if you work in a company, it's very hard to tell the truth sometimes. I mean, for many reasons. I'm not here to insult anyone. But I would tell me, look, look at your competitors. Have you thought of that? At the end, you're not going to decide for the company, but your voice. And I gave an example before. IG, this big financial company. There was a speech given. A given, and the guy from the board brought somebody in. The guy looked like Jesus. I mean, the guy, fucking Jesus, sandals, a long hair. I mean, if you saw him on the street, I would, would have given him five pounds. <laughs> but the guy was 
the head of an advertisement agency in Berlin. And the guy was very honed to know what startups want. So it was a fantastic message to see a big corporate working with somebody non-traditional but very knowledgeable. And there was two messages. First of all, they get great insights from a guy who deals with marketing with startups all day and also showing to the world that, hey, we allow such voices within our organization. That's about it <laughs> for now. Okay. Um, brilliant. And just so, um, uh, one last question for me, and, and then I can open up to the audience for, for questions. Um, I mean, Ian, how, how should brands approach you if they want to work with you? I was Be waiting to answer that one. Oh, well, <laughs> don't matter. Don't matter. You, you, can, you, can answer, you can answer that one. You can answer that one as well. It on me. You yeah, can man. answer that one and then move on to the next one if, if, if you want. So, I, I think sometimes, I, so I get a mix of approaches from different countries, different types of companies. Firstly, it, it's, um, what am I looking for? It's something where it's appropriate to what I talk about. So mm -hmm. I get some where it's totally a different subject. I was just saying on our table, and I don't feel, uh, A, I've got the knowledge to, to comment on that it, that represents my personal brand well. And likewise, I don't want to dilute my brand and, and my social and audience by coming out with 23 different subjects they're not expecting from me. My audience is cloud, it's GDPR, it's security, that Bill said, um, and it's social. So it's, a, it's that. As soon as it starts going outside that, I turn stuff down because I, it doesn't relate, it doesn't do me any good. It might be a quick win, but it actually then takes me off brand. Um, and sometimes it's not just monetary. Sometimes it's monetary and it's looking for, is there a conflict of interest? So I don't do any product promotion or anything. It will often be insights, opinion pieces, um, a blog on a subject, but not on a product or something like that. It's something that adds value to their voice. Um, but other times it's a quick pro quo. So it isn't as monetary, but actually we'd like to have some thought leadership in some article. And, I can, and that's going to go out to this mass audience. So, hey, I'm going to be in there. Okay, that's got some brand value to me. So it isn't always monetary. It can also be the profile it gives. And I've got a, a network. Bill, Bill sat there. But the influencers, we all leverage each other. So that's the thing I think yes. people miss is, and I was just saying on the table, people often want to, who do, how do you want to get out there? So first, what I say, look at your buyer persona, work backwards. Who influences them? And sometimes those influences you want are difficult to get to, right? Because they are the elite. Um, from in the ecosystem I'm in, I'm Mark Benioff in Salesforce ecosystem is an influencer. I would love to get engagement with him to share something of ours because that's got massive. It's not going to happen overnight, but I'm not going direct to him. I've mapped out who are his influencers, whose stuff does he share, what type of stuff, and I'm two or three levels down courting them. So I've got several of the world's uh, top CRM independent analysts who have shared my stuff and I've got a dialogue with. Because what I'm looking for is how do I get some piece of content where they comment in it themselves, I get them involved, and because of what they've done, he listens to them, not me, but my content slips through. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of a game. It isn't always going direct. It's influencers of influencers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that, is that yeah. similar for you, Liz? Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, the, I agree with both of, both of what, what you said. I wanted to touch on a little bit the first part about, um, you know, what's in it for the influencer and is it part of my brand and is it good for me? And it's not about like a fee you get. Um, There's sort of a subset of fintech because since I've been in financial technology for a while and I've been in the blockchain and Bitcoin space for quite some time um, and I'm on the board of a cryptocurrency startup as well, I get asked to uh, endorse people's ICOs all the time. Does anyone in the room know what an ICO is? Okay, so <laughs> some people do. Um, it's an uh, initial coin offering. It's, it's a way for uh, blockchain startups to raise funds through crowdfunding a token sale. Okay, and I'm actually really interested in that. Um, and it is very much my space. However, there's a lot of dodgy stuff going on right at the moment. And there's been a lot of really bad press around promoting ICOs and very sort of weird people charging $100,000 to send a tweet for an ICO. And I'm just like, and I, if you see my LinkedIn, I get like daily. Can you, how much do you charge to tweet my ICO? And I'm like, no, that, that will make me look ridiculous. You know, part of my brand is I'm authentic. I know, you know, I've been in this industry for a while. If I start tweeting some ICO I know nothing about, I'm going to look like a fool. So that's so right now. I have a blank and ban on ICOs. <laughs> but we'll but yeah. take a Star Wars headset. Though. Yes, exactly. I would. <laughs> My son would love that. Right, have we got any questions from the audience? Because I really want to. I really want to open this up to the yes. audience. For there's a question um, there from Adita from SAP. Have we got the microphone? Um, 
recommendation to help um, us, big, some uh, in many occasions big corporate companies, when it comes to prioritization. And I explain what I mean. Both of you work in actually specific industry in FSI. So you've got actually expertise both on the industry, you must have worked in the industry, you know the industry very well, and then you've got expertise on the particular technology areas you both represent. And my question is this, big corporations like us, and I've got a colleague here from uh, Cisco, we struggle with the number of priorities we have to hit. We, have, we try to raise our uh, uh, awareness and our presence in industry, show to our customers relevancy in industry, and guess what, SAP focus on 24 industries. We try to raise our awareness about particular technologies that of course we've got portfolio against, and guess what, there are some key topics like digital transformation which are somehow then floating above. The challenge I find is how do we prioritize, how companies like ourselves prioritize and get the best out of you to try to combine all of these different aspects and all of these different um, lenses. Thank you. Well, I, I would say don't don't boil the ocean. I mean, try to try to find mm. what you know what specifically you want to work <coughs> towards. So, a number of years ago, I worked with a company called EPAM, um, and they're an Eastern European uh, big tech firm, and they really wanted to be known for financial services in the UK. So, we started. We put together a webcast with them. We put together a series of videos with uh, some of their their employees, with some of their clients. We had intimate roundtables, um, and it was a whole sort of media package so that they were now a known entity in, in financial services in the UK. So instead of saying we want to be, you know, all over Europe or we want to be financial services globally, you know, find, work it a little bit at a time. That's, that's, and then find out what, what area, what region, what industry, what portion you think is the most priority for you. And then, Sparrows, do you have any advice on that I'm question? not really. It's, uh, as you said before, it means mm. it's too broad. Uh, I don't really have an answer on this, I think. <laughs> yes, yeah, I think I have I think, to admit. But you I know, that's a nice thing about influencers, too. I mean, I often get questions, and uh, then I say, I don't know, but I know who to call. <laughs> they might call me, you know? The yes, thing is. I'm available for work. So. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's much more important to say, also, something you don't know. I mean, those are the real, you know, because, you know, in this case, I think I think some of the answers that you've given there, um, you've got a network, um, so brands need to understand how to give value to the network, and they need to start with a handful of people, either horizontal themes or vertical sectors, but, but they've got to start somewhere where you can manage it and you can deliver value. But it's a, it's a big challenge. Um, any, any other questions from the... What is it, Luke, there's a question. I got yeah, I don't think I can ignore you. Oh, yeah, just I'm really keen. So, um, so we have one with, with the clients we work with, which is um, obviously they want to have their subject matter experts connect with you guys and talk to you as peer to peer. But in a sort of logistical world, they need sometimes an agency to be doing the heavy lifting, to be communicating the to and fro. Do you mind talking to somebody from an agency on behalf of a client? Or do you, do you want to go straight to the head honcho at the client? Do you expect that? I guess. Yeah. Ian? So for me, I just want simple engagement. <laughs> okay. So I, I, I won't name vendors, but I've had vendors where to do some really simple stuff, it's been, for me, from my end, oh, there's this form, there's this, there's this. How many more? They've made it really difficult as a corporate brand organisation. And I understand that, but as a social, just, I just want to NDA or something, something simple and just get on with what I do. I want it simple. So I don't care who I'm talking to as long as... Um, a, they keep it simple. There's not heavy lifting on my part. Um, and B, they understand what their objective is. That's, that's the frustrating one is, uh, we want you to do some social stuff and amplify. Okay. Any more? No. And they come to sort of with a blank page. Don't, don't sort of know how much we want to spend or what we want to do or anything. Okay, that's great. This, we're just, uh, it makes it a lot easier if someone comes and says, look, what we're trying to do is we want um, a content stream where you have some thought leadership and you create some content for us. We'd like to amplify and do this, this, and this and get it out via some new influencers because we influence often. My stuff's picked up by journalists. Um, comments, someone said, you know, I get comments for, can you make a quick comment? Because they've seen what we do. 
you get other opportunities to speak, etc. So a package of it for that, this is the sort of budget, how's that sound? So at least something, mm -hmm. as opposed to a blank bit of paper, because it's, here's a blank bit of paper, but a load of paper before we can talk. You're not making it easy for me, and I've got a lot of other stuff I've got to do. So that, that would be my answer to that. Yeah, actually, good point. I mean, it makes you much more professional if you come uh, with concrete, uh, what you have to offer, what you can pay. I mean, can you afford the ship? Can you afford the yacht or the sports car? <laughs> <laughs> it's how it is, you know what I mean? And you can tell by, I mean, people are polite, but the conversation gets very quickly cut off because time is short. And it's not arrogance. It's, uh, you know, influencers have to realize, I mean, I'll give you another example. I love art. And uh, the German photographers, Gorski, the Becher Schüler, what they were taught before they were really famous, uh, most expensive fa um, photographers in the world, the teacher told them, you have to feel like an artist and you have to know your value. And influencers, I see a lot, they don't know their values. I mean, and that's where it starts. You know, everyone has this game. But you have to know what you can bring to the table and what you're worth. And that's the beginning, because at that point, they take you seriously. You know, and anything for free, and when they tell me, oh, you're going to get to get some of our customers, I, I couldn't care less. Not in an arrogant way, respectfully, but you have to really educate yourself. That if, It depends what, I mean, we got a great presentation before, Lenovo. There are all kinds of influencers, and they're all extremely valuable. But you have to know, that's my budget, and who can I approach with that budget? But, it, but also look for things that are non-traditional. I mean, you mentioned agencies. I mean, I, from a monetary point of view, I don't mind who comes to me for work. Um, but one of the most successful things I ever did was I put together, um, uh, with my old company, uh, an interview campaign with a man named Richard Brown, who used to work at IBM, and it was about Bitcoin and blockchain. And it was a, it was a really traditional marketing activity. There was a video, it was promoted on the media site. What made it famous was it got picked up by a, a Reddit thread, blockchain, um, where I was, I, was, I was so frightened of Reddit, because um, I'm an old person. Um, but in it, it said, oh, this is one of the first journalists we ever saw who understands what blockchain is. And I was like, oh. And then a guy made a commemorative t-shirt based on the interview that he sold. And that like became a thing, and it went, went viral. And that's something that like I've found agencies don't predict. They're like Facebook groups and Twitter and stuff, and they don't understand this sort of like underground community of people talking about stuff on Reddit that can have a huge influence. And now Richard Brown told me that it was the most important interview of his career, and he's now at R3, um, so he's now the blockchain guy. Mm. Fantastic. Any other questions from the audience? Uh, yeah, just one, one here, and then we'll come to you afterwards. Um, I've never worked with influencers before, so I'm not sure this is a stupid question. Um, but if some, if a brand comes to you with a brief that isn't quite right for you, would you just turn it down, or do you go back with suggestions? For, well, yeah, okay. well, for me, I, I, it depends how off brief it is. Mm. As I said, if it's a totally not what I'm known for, and I'm really into this personal brand piece, and if, if there's a book called Known by Mark Schaefer that, if you're interested, it's really good. I wish I'd known it before I'd self-taught it over the years. Um, but if it's totally out there, I tell them it, it just doesn't fit because I won't have your audience and I'm not going to add... I'm going to have to go and research to figure out what to say. If it's mm. cloud or absent in my space and I can just rattle it off, it's easier for me and the context that I'm going to give. So Oracle has me blog about cloud, multi-cloud hybrid, all this stuff. Because I can rattle that off and give them my an, an opinion that isn't Oracle biased but get is insight for their audience. So if it's close, it, it's about club, but it's something sort of off the side. Maybe it's blockchain where, well, what, what do you mean? I can do an angle on this, but I don't know what you would know. If it's pure that, I'm not the person for you. Because otherwise you're, you're faking your own brand. So yeah. I think a good influencer should, nah, but walk away. Yeah. Analytica is perfect for that. Because they're going to tell you who, who to, to approach. I mean, there are companies out there that, that do this job. No, I mean, it's, it's obvious for obvious like reasons <laughs> because I mean, you say that's our problem, and you will you will tell them who to approach. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, 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 but I that's I mean, just that's <laughs> the short answer. Yeah. I mean, and once you have those names, you will already pass the one hurdle of mm. oh, I don't write about this. 
but <laughs> no, but it's true. I tend to, um, like, for example, insurance, like since it's financial services, I get a lot of people asking me to talk about insurance and I can, but it's not, it's just, I'm a bank person, but I know, I know the people that I could recommend to do that. Um, but sort of on another side of that, um, you know, I got asked a few months ago by this uh, fintech education course in California to promote them to my followers for, you know, and they'll give me a percentage of the, and I thought, I've never taken this course. I don't know anyone who's taken this course. I have no idea whether it's good. I just, I don't feel comfortable promoting this to my followers for something that, although, yeah, it's my space, fintech education, but I don't know anything about you guys. So if you want me to, if you want to let me take the course, I can find out for myself. But I would never like do that um, without without knowing what the product is. Fantastic. One last question over there. Sorry, it's a bit of a continuation on from this uh, the lady's question. It's it's more drilling down into the opinion of the business that comes to you. So in a scenario where. For example, someone says, we believe that this is the most important thing that's going to happen in blockchain going forward. We like <laughs> your comment is. on it. If you come back, and we, are you more likely to come back and say, actually, I don't think it is. I think this is the more interesting thing that you should be talking about. Is that kind of, I mean, Spiros said, we need to use influencers to learn what the, the conversation is as much as being involved in it. And that's the feedback that we'd like from influencers before we went out. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, not everyone does this. You kind of hit that the wall of PR bullshit. And I know that there, you know, there are people employed in PR and they're, they're there to promote, you know, their brand. And they look at you and they say this stuff like, this is the greatest thing ever to hit it's financial nice. services ever. And you're like, no, it isn't. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you do, you have to give, and sometimes you do get this look of shock on their face because you're saying, no, this is reality. Um, see, that happens a lot. Great, thank you. Um, so we're nearly out of time. Can you just um, finish by giving one short piece of advice to, to all the brands in here about how they should approach you know, people like you? Um, I would say um, don't approach influencers at, in a transactional way um, because they're people. As you mentioned, we talked a lot about collaboration. You know, in, People tend to be influencers because they're good at communication and they're good at using certain tools for engagement. So these people want you to engage with them as a person and get to know them. You know, just getting some sort of blanket request saying, can you promote this? Can you, how much do you charge for this? Without knowing what, you know, what I'm an expert in and what I do, or even knowing me as a person, um, is is wrong. So always, always look to people for, with, as a relationship and not a business transaction. Ian? So two quick things linked. And how, how do you get us to engage for free um, to do something? So for me, and I've, I've done this onward to my, my own influencer network, which help, helps expand what I can do, is easy ones are reach out to us. You've got an article or piece of insight content going out, get a comment. Get something from us to include in it. And then when you share it, include us in it. Because guess what? If I've been in there, Sage has done this while grabbing me for a video recently, when they release it, and I'm in it, and they include, oh, including I'm always, guess what? I'm going to, fantastic, I'll share that on, because I'm in it. You've flattered me and done something that adds, gives me some extra content to share, and or if you've got an interesting piece of content that I'm not in, but it is relevant to, to cloud and stuff, why not share me? People just don't do it. I do it all the time, share something, and I include influencers I want to get to in it, and quite often they'll share it. And then they'll spot you. What I'm looking for is that they, A, like it. That's a step. Ideally, they share it. Ideally, they follow me back. And I've got a lot of very strong, influential followers because of just doing that, just playing that little game, nurturing them a little bit. That nurture process that marketeers know, do it on social. And you'll start to find you build your own audience. And guess what? They now see you in their feed and they share other stuff you didn't even include them in. But it's, it, you've got to play the long game to this. Mm. Great, fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, don't approach me to write a blog. <laughs> but uh, I mean, if uh, in my case, and what's very important here very quickly is you, you can hear from the, the three of us, everyone has a different approach and all are good approaches, or at least the one, you know, of course, and there are many more. And, uh, but uh, in my case, for instance, and that makes it so difficult to, to realize how to approach those people. In my case, it's only collaborations, which for me makes a win-win situation. I mean, a one-off is not interesting. I don't promote a thing. I promote things by 
saying on my Twitter handle, LinkedIn, that I'm associated with a company and I have such huge traffic for my space, that's a promotion. But that's also a liability for me as well. So therefore, you become very selective. But uh, if, you, if you believe in the insights of one of us or one of other, like Chris Cladill there, well, one of my influencers, uh, then... This is everyone's influence. Yes, uh, Chris, please get up. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> uh, then, uh, you know... That's valuable to me, a partnership. But all the rest, you know, very hard. But it's very. What I heard today at the tables, there was knowledge I could take home because it's also good to hear the other side. Great, fantastic. Thank Sorry. you for having us. No we, thank Sorry you. I think I think that we've heard that you've got to personalize it. I mean, that's uh, obvious, but a lot of people don't do that. You've got to concentrate on the right topic. It's about. Um, insights for the industry rather than just thinking about what a brand can get from the initial engagement. And it's also, I think, one of the key points is leveraging the network and just connecting and just getting everyone together and then hopefully creating some great content that recognizes you guys um, because your know, brand can't come cold and say, can you do this for us? It has to be a nurturing process. So um, brands have to create the right content to recognize influences um, and create something that's actually cool and innovative and something that they might want to share. So um, thank you so much for sharing your insights. It was great to have you here. So thank you.